a very warm good morning to all. My name is Dr. Jyoti Tiwari, working as an assistant professor at Army Institute of Education, Greater Noida. Today, we are going to discuss a very important topic, which is key recommendations of NEP 2020 related to higher education. So let's start. So as you all know, that National Education Policy 2020 was launched by Union Cabinet of India on 29th July 2020 with the vision of new education system of India. National policy was approved after extensive deliberation over three, four years and brainstorming over lacks of suggestions. Policy shifts focus from what to how to think. And our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi had said that education system of India should be based on our ethos, values and culture. The policy has risen to establish India as a knowledge superpower. So in this extensive policy, we will be focusing only on the higher education's recommendation. So before we start, first we will discuss few background. As we all know that this is the third national education policy. The first policy was launched in 1968 and that time the prime minister was Mrs. Indira Gandhi. The second policy was launched in 1986 and that time the prime minister was Mr. Rajiv Gandhi. And uh, the gap between first and second policy was 18 years. And the third national education policy was launched in 2020. And the prime minister is Mr. Narendra Modi. And after a long wait of 34 years, we got this new education policy or national education policy. So a question arises in our mind that what we did before 1968. So before 1968, because we got independence in 1947 and got our first national policy in 1968. So till the time what we did. So we followed the British education system till 1968 when we got our first policy. And before that, few committees or commissions were established. The first commission was established in 1949 and the name was Higher Education Commission. The head of this Higher Education Commission was uh, Dr. Radhakrishnan. And uh, he, uh, Dr. Radhakrishnan made the recommendation related to the higher education because when the Britishers left India, the highly educated people, the number of highly educated people in India were very less at that time. So uh, the requirement was filled to enroll the people in the higher education. So the commission, commission this higher education commission mentioned few recommendations to how to revamp the higher education system. The second commission was established in 1952-53. The name of this commission was Mudalier Commission and Secondary Education Commission. The recommendation related to the secondary education was made by this commission. And the third very important commission was Kothari Commission, which was established in 1964. And uh, they submitted their report in 1968. The head of this commission was Dr. Dalat Singh Kothari. And this commission, uh, also known as Indian Education Commission, because uh, they focused the overall education system of India. And on the basis of the recommendation of this commission, we got our first national education policy. So this was the little history related to the national education policy. Now we will focusing on the National Education Policy 2020. So this National Education Policy has four major parts and 27 chapters. The first part is uh, related with the school education. It has nine chapters, chapter number one to eight. 
okay and the second part is related with the higher education and this is the biggest part of this uh, policy chapter number 9 to 19 uh, is included in this part and these all chapters relate uh, are related with the higher education the third chapter the third part is related with the other key areas to focus and in this part five chapters are included which is related with professional education adult education lifelong learning promotion of indian languages art and culture technological use and integration online and digital education so these are the other key areas to focus and the last part is related with uh, how to make it happen means what will be the action plan what will be the implementation plan of this NEP 2020 three chapters are included in this part so this is the uh, uh, overall structure of our new or national education policy the aim of this national policy is uh, the quality higher education must aim to develop good thoughtful, well-rounded and creative individuals. Means the individual who are getting higher education should be thoughtful, well-rounded, means all-round development should be there and they should be creative individuals. And to keep this vision in mind, policy recommended several, uh, several policy made the several recommendations. So we will be focusing on these recommendations. The first recommendation is, and the major recommendation is related to GER. The full form of GER is gross enrollment ratio. And how we calculate this gross enrollment ratio uh, means uh, number of students who are enrolled in higher education divided by the eligible student. Eligible students means the students who are aged between 18 to 23 years, multiply by 100. So in this way, we calculate the percentage of GER. Okay. So according to the survey made by All India Survey in higher education in 2021, the gross enrollment ratio in higher education in India is 27.3% and which is very less in uh, comparison to other developed countries. The highest GER of higher education is in USA with 88.2% and Germany 20, uh, sorry 70.3%. UK is having the gross enrollment ratio in higher education is 60% and uh, the developing country, the emerging countries like China is having the GER in higher education is 49.1 percent and not uh, it is not like we are very behind from these countries we are very behind from the global average of world gross enrollment ratio in higher education which is 36.7 percent so the first recommendation of this NEP 2020 is we need to increase the uh, gross enrollment ratio in higher education from 27.3% to 50% by the time of 2035. So this is the major recommendation. Now the question arises, so why are students are not motivated to enroll in higher education? Means there are so many problems are there in our higher education system. So in the first chapter, chapter number nine, the policy highlighted the problems in the higher education system and later they uh, suggest some solutions also, okay, how we can overcome these problems. So now we are going to focus that what are the problems which is highlighted by this policy. So the first problem is that our higher education system is fragmented. It is separate, it is divided by in various parts. A rigid separation of discipline is there. As uh, we have discussed this uh, in the school system also, that uh, our school system is divided into various disciplines, humanities, commerce, and science. And thus, once the student opt one particular discipline, 
he are uh, he is forced to study the same discipline in higher education also so integration of disciplines are missing so this is the main problem of our higher education and this policy recommend the multidisciplinary uh, multidisciplinary education the integrated education so the more focus is on multidisciplinary and integration the second problem mentioned by the policy is limited access for socio-economic disadvantaged group. Means our higher education is very expensive. So the people who are uh, belonging uh, for, with uh, this poor, uh, poor uh, or below poverty line, they find it very expensive. So they drop their education and uh, this is the main reason of dropouts. Means the, num the number of GER or the gross enrollment ratio in higher education is less because of the expensive higher education. The next problem is less emphasis on research. In our higher education, the main focus is on teaching. The less emphasis uh, is there on research. So this is again a big problem. The next is limited autonomy for institutions and teachers. The teachers are bound to uh, complete the syllabus in the time bound manner and uh, they can't apply the various uh, pedagogies, the developed pedagogies. So this is the problem. They have limited autonomy to develop the courses or the curriculum and the institutions also having the limited liberty. So this is again a problem. Apart from these problems, the language is also a big issue. All higher education is uh, rather in English language and in Hindi language. The regional languages are not there. So the policy focus that higher education should be there in regional languages also. So this is also again a problem. Apart from it, the student support is not there. The Because the policy admit that this is the time of higher education where most of the students first time stay far from these families. So the more students support the, uh, the mentoring, the counseling, this, these things are, these things should be happened uh, at higher education institution. So the student friendly atmosphere is missing from our higher education institution. So these are the challenges which is faced by the national education policy. They have given suggestions to all these problems, which we will going to discuss one by one. So the first recommendation we have discussed that our GER should be uh, 50% by the end of 2035. The second recommendation is that our education system, I told you that it is fragmented. It is divided by the various types of universities and colleges. State, uh, we have various types of universities like state university, private university, central universities, deemed universities and likewise the colleges like state college, affiliated college, autonomous college. So this fragmented system should be end. And the policy is meant, the, the policy states that currently we have 1,113 universities as per the data given by the uh, higher education uh, um, given by the All India Survey of Higher Education in 2021, that at present we have 1,113 universities, 43,796 colleges, out of which 11,296 colleges or institutions are standalone institutions. So these all institutions should be closed. The all standalone should institution should be uh, closed or merged in multidisciplinary universities by the end of 2030. So the policy focus or the policy aim to develop 25,000 multidisciplinary education and research institution. 
research in uh, research universities which is called m e r u s means so means all types of universities and colleges are converted into or merged we can say uh, into 25000 multidisciplinary education and research universities and in these university, these are the uh, universities in which the research should be main aim. The teaching and research both should be there, but the more focus and emphasis should be given on uh, research work. So this is again a second recommendation and very important recommendation. The next recommendation is multiple entry and exit. So in this recommendation, uh, I want to share one example of one of my very close friends that what happened in the past, uh, like uh, my friend did my graduation and she was in the final year of graduation and she got married and due to her family responsibilities, she was not able to attend that final year graduation, final year examination. And what happened, she even not realized at the time of uh, uh, her son's admission, when she filled the admission form, she found that she was just 12th pass out. Because her first year and second year, uh, because of the gap, she was not able to complete her degree. So her actual education is at that time was just 12th pass. So, the, the, uh, because our uh, social system is like this, uh, in the graduation, the most of the uh, families are looking a suitable match for girls. And the boys also, due to the uh, financial problems, they uh, leave their studies in between. So, uh, keep this point in mind. The policy uh, suggests a multiple entry and exit uh, solution. What will happen in this solution? If the if a child or student studied one year of a course, he or she will get a certificate in that particular subject. If he studied two years, then he will get diploma. And if he studied the three years, means complete three years, then he will get, he or she will get the degree of that particular discipline. Okay. And if uh, the all these credit should be deposited in the academic bank of credit and the short form of this academic bank of credit is ABC means during the coursework whatever credits he or she is gaining is deposited in academic bank of credit and due to any reason if he or she is uh, leaving the course in between uh, and uh, when he will, he or she will start again, he is not need to uh, gain those credits again. He can start from uh, further, means uh, if he or she completed the uh, 50 credit of that particular course and the total credit of 100 of that particular course, he need to avail only the rest 50 credits. So this is the multiple entry and exit means the student can take uh, entry uh, in course uh, at any time and he or she can leave the course as per his uh, his uh, as per his pace or as per his facility. So this is uh, this point given little freedom to the students. The next recommendation is the special weightage is to given to open and distance learning programs and MOOCs courses. MOOCs means massive open online courses. Like in past, what happened? The online courses considered the little lesser one. Uh, the people prefer the regular degrees and uh, they will, uh, like if you are applying for a job and if they see in your mark sheet that uh, you avail your degree from open, um, uh, means open and distance learning mode and uh, the other candidate is having the degree in regular mode. So they prefer that candidate who is having the regular mode degree. But this, uh, this, 
separation between the online and offline courses is removed by this policy and they gave the special weightage to the open distance learning programs and MOOCs courses. No hard separation between the online and offline course. The policy recommends the blended mode. If you are availing a course in offline mode, you need to attempt some or you need need to complete some online courses or MOOCs courses also. Like in example, for example, in beard course, uh, when you are uh, availing one beard course, so as per the university nowadays, it is mandatory to complete some uh, MOOCs courses also. And they have particular credits. Once you avail these course and at the end of the year, uh, you will get those credits. So it is mandatory to uh, complete these MOOCs courses also. So uh, the policy is asking for blending mode. If you are availing a degree in online mode, then some offline interaction is must for online course also. Okay, so no hard separation between online and offline. And the second is quality of these online courses should be enhanced. Means uh, more quality, the more the focus is on more quality. The, the, the content should be rich. The content should be of high quality. So that then only we can give the equal weightage to these online courses as per the offline course. So this is the, again a good recommendation that we have given more weightage to online and distance learning courses. The next recommendation is more emphasis on research. As I told you in the past, the main focus of higher institutions are uh, on, of, are on teaching. So the less emphasis was on research, but as per NEP 2020, the research is the main aim of higher education institutions, even not only in higher education institution, at graduation level, undergraduation courses, and even on school level, the more focus is given on research work. And to promote these research work, the establishment of National Research Foundation, NRF is there. They will look after these all these things, means they provide funds, they develop the infrastructure for research. So uh, re uh, the establishment of NRF is there. And a very important thing is research will be the part of undergraduate course too. Earlier in the past, research are the part of only uh, master's courses and after that you can avail a uh, proper PhD in that particular field but this policy recommends that the graduation program is also having a, a specific one year for research purposes means the duration of undergraduate program is as per the policy will enhance into four years the three years is of, of particular discipline and the last one year is related with the research work. And once you opt this four years of uh, undergraduation program with one year of research work, you will directly get admission into PhD. Means for PhD, you need not require the master degree if you have this four years of graduation program. Okay, and if you have the three years of graduation program, then you need to do masters of two years, then only you can avail the PhD courses. Okay, so as per the policy, more emphasis is on research work. The next is very important and as we all are related with teacher education. So this uh, policy mentioned um, many reforms related to the teacher education. The policy mentioned that the Justice J.S. Verma Commission, which was established by the Honorable Supreme Court in the year of 2012, mentioned that over 10,000 standalone institutions are related with the teacher education institution. They are providing degrees in B.Ed. and M.Ed. And uh, this 
Justice Verma Commission mentioned that all are substandard college means over 10,000 standalone teacher education institutions are substandard institutions and they are selling degrees. So, uh, Commission mentioned that uh, and recommend that all this type of institution who are selling degree, who are providing degree in non-attending mode, mode should be clo closed. Policy recommend that by the end of 2030, all single stand institutes will close or converted into multidisciplinary institutions. In multidisciplinary institutions means where the student can variety of options and they can get uh, the integrated program means four years of integrated uh, BA program will introduce and currently it is in pilot projects many state universities and central universities are uh, already introduced this integrated BA program but it is in pilot mode and very soon uh, after the 2030 all BA degrees should be the integrated BA degrees. And uh, it is not like that ki only BA, uh, only this four year integrated BA program is there. The two year and one year BA program will also uh, run. And uh, the students who did the simple graduation, they will attain this two years of BA program. The, and the students who attain the four years of uh, graduation program with a specialization of any particular subject can do a beard of one year. So, uh, uh, means that all three types of four years, two years and one year beard program will run in, uh, in coming years. So, this is a major recommendation and reforms related to the teacher education. And the very important uh, recommendation is the focus should be on quality education because policy admits that the teachers are the torch bearer of the society. If we want to uh, make any change in the society, the, the, the key or the hold of the future generation in the teacher's hand. So the quality teacher education should be there. Uh, the uh, during the course the student should be well equipped with the use of the technology online courses they should be aware about the platforms like diksha and uh, swam prabha and all these online courses uh, and MOOCs courses should be there and the use of technology should be there in the in their teacher education program so these relation, relation uh, these reforms are related with the teacher education and the chapter number 15 is related with the uh, teacher reforms related to the teacher education the next recommendation is uh, is with set global standard of quality as i told you the policy strongly recommend the quality education and how we can attain the quality, uh, the policy recommend the faculty exchange program and the student exchange program where faculty can uh, go the other countries and uh, see the best practices in the field of education. And uh, I can give you example like the Finland is having the Finland is considered the best education system in the world and they consider they have the policy of less quantity and higher quality. So on the basis of these uh, um, these other countries' recommendation, you can see the changes are coming in our education system also. CBSE nowadays, uh, the cutting a big portion of the syllabus so that the teachers can focus on the quality. So likewise, in higher education also, the policy recommend that the faculty exchange program and the student exchange program should be planned in their coursework so that uh, student and teachers can get exposure of best practices of the world. The next suggestion is autonomy for faculty in terms of pedagogy and curriculum development. 
so the teachers should get the autonomy means how they want to teach the content the pedagogy the science of teaching so the autonomy should be there the curriculum development uh, autonomy should be there in the teacher's hand likewise the institutions are also having the autonomy to develop the courses and to provide the degrees so as policy suggests ki when we give the autonomy to the faculty and institution then only we can uh, we can think about the quality education apart from it the policy suggests many parameters like uh, uh, the selection process of the student the uh, transparency should be there only the faculties or teachers who are capable can get jobs and the incentives should be there for good teaching the promotion is based on some particular parameters and the transparency should there and if a teacher is uh, giving good efforts and uh, trying her best to for good practices uh, should get incentive and promotion likewise if they are not doing their duties properly the demotion policy should also be there so the global standard should be there because as per the survey of times uh, you times of higher education universities on not a single institution or university is there among top 250 universities so that should not be there the policy aim that our education should be that much of qualitative that the foreign students come here and study here so the global standard quality should be there in our educational institution the next recommendation is more focus on the indian languages and culture as i told you that our honorable prime minister has mentioned that our education policy should be based on our culture our values and on our needs so the this policy has given more focus on indian languages and local languages basically and uh, the national language translation mission is established though it is already working it is already established in 2010 and its head office is in delhi new delhi and but earlier it uh, the this uh, the national language translation missions main focus is translation from the foreign languages but now it is doing translation from uh, translation the content from english and hindi to the local languages and apart from it the policy is giving facility to all the student that the admission form and the course is there in local languages the examination form admission form everything should be there that even the question papers should be there in the if the student want to pursue any course in their local language so the content is there in good content is there in local languages also apart from it a uh, policy introducing new courses like i indology indian languages art culture yoga ayurveda history of india and modern india so what is the main aim of all these courses that is the goal is internationalization of education so that more students come to india and study and uh, like we have uh, good universities in the past like nalanda and takshila so on the basis of those thing on the basis of the same type of the quality education we need to develop in our current universities so the foreign stud students uh, will come here and do courses from our university the next recommendation in higher education is related with the emphasis on student support as policy mentioned i told you earlier also that the policy except that the, this is the time of higher education when most of the students stay away from their families so it is a higher time that the students required mentoring and counseling so these type of facilities should be there in the higher education institution the next is student participation should be there in all activities 
so whatever happen in the institution from the from the policy making to the execution the student should be there all types of clubs and activities uh, uh, the student should be a member on those uh, clubs and committees and their active role should be there the next is choice based credit system means uh, the students are uh, in this policy give the facility to the student uh, to opt some uh, the based on subject choose some subject based on their hobbies so this policy recommend that the students can take some major subjects and minor subject major subject is related with those particular discipline like if i am taking a science discipline so my major subjects are related with the science only but my minor subject can be related with the art drama painting dance so uh, this choice based credit system and they need to complete all the credit to complete the course so this facility is given to the student so that they uh, they can avail uh, subjects on uh, means variety is there and they can student uh, they can opt the subject as per their choice and the national scholarship portal is established and what they will do they will provide the scholarship who will the students uh, their whose economic conditions are not good this uh, national scholarship portal will give them scholarship so these all recommendations are there uh, for the student support which is very necessary because uh the teacher student and the curriculum are the main pillars of the education system so more focus more emphasis is given on the student support so as we have seen that uh with all these recommendation we hope that uh, in higher education must enable an individual to study more or one specialized area of interest at a deep level and also develop character ethical and uh, constitutional values intellectual curiosity scientific temperament creativity spirit of service and 21st century capabilities jai hind jai bharat thank you all i hope i am able to add little understanding on the topic thank you for your patience listening thank you all.